After hearing Retirement Fund Board Chairman Joe T. San Augustine's testimony during last Thursday's contentious hearing on the governor's supplemental budget, Budget Committee Chair Senator Ben Pangolina today said it's clear to him that diverting contributions to the retirement fund in the future is not the way to make up for GovGuam's cash shortfall. I am not going to allow the threat, uh, even threatening, you know, these, these retirees. And that's really what this plan does. It threatens them. They may not ultimately get it, but boy, the anxiety that we're creating with this threat that they will not have their annuity payments for the regular retirees if we do this plan, I I'm just not going to, to work towards achieving that. And the governor today acknowledged that he is considering an alternative proposal after meeting this morning with Retirement Fund Board Chairman Joe T. San Augustine. They put other options on the, on the, on the, uh, on the plate. And as far as I'm concerned, what those options are, as long as, uh, as, long as we can work to, towards a common consensus, it has to do with uh, reamortization uh, of, the, um, of, of, of the calculated government contribution. So with that, uh, if it can solve the issues, fine. If, if, and if we're mutually agreeable to it, um, fine with me. However, the governor is not compromising on the overall need for making up the cash shortfall. $36 million must be found. The supplemental budget must be passed or else. Worst case scenario, the retirement fund option uh, does not occur. Then this administration will be moving forward in the necessary adjustments. Um, and then they're going to be, you know, we're going to have to do what we're going to have to do. For uh, those adjustments, will, well, personnel will have to be touched. Senator Pangolinan is mindful of the need to act quickly, but he still wants the facts before the committee meets to make a final decision on the supplemental budget. What do we do about the health insurance? When is it going to run out? And when is Calvo's going to cancel it if we don't pay them any longer? you know, with this increase. So we've got to find out what that date is. And that date is a function of payment. So when do we have no more money to pay them unless we appropriate more money? How soon does this have to be done? I think the next, well, uh, we need to move forward in the next couple of days. And uh, it's, you know, it was made very clear by my uh, fiscal policy people that we'd like to see a resolution by, by June 1st. However, Senator Pangolinan and Governor Calvo both firmly disagree on who knew what when about the surge in cost for the Calvo Select Care Health Insurance Plan. The legislature was uh, aware of it, and in terms of at least the leadership of the finances, there's no doubt about it. Um, you know, at one, at one point, uh, the chairman and, and the folks that put that budget together said they had no idea. Uh, now, of course, they changed the story, and they said, yeah, we, we knew, we got informed, and we were in that meeting, uh, but we never gave the go-ahead. Um, but obviously they knew in July. I have no reason to attack the governor. I did not know what amount, how can we know when the contract wasn't even signed before the budget was passed? The contract and the agreement on the final cost of that contract was signed after the budget was passed and after the numbers came out after it was signed into law. You didn't know. I didn't know. Kevin Kerrigan, PNC News.